Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Acres. And this afternoon, I'm obviously in the garden. In fact, I'm right in front of the asparagus bed. And the reason I'm here this afternoon is because of the need for insect control. Now, a very important part of controlling insects in your garden is understanding the fact that they could be there. Sometimes you just may not notice them. And this year, there have been, especially just recently, a lot more shield bugs around here than usual. And I've been watching for them, and whenever possible, I smoosh them. Today, I went out to check a couple of the game cameras that are located out here, and I noticed that there was something in here. Now at this time of year, everything should be very ferny, and the only thing that we should be seeing is these red berries on the asparagus ferns. But I noticed black things, and I'm like, black things? Why are the black things on here? And then I realized they are shield bugs. So let me show you these charming little beasts up close. Uh, I don't know how well you can actually see these guys. They're very annoying. You probably can see the profile on them. But I knew exactly what to do with these guys. It's a very simple solution. You can collect them. And by collect them, I mean literally collect them in a bucket or something. And I happen to ca keep some old tin cans out here. Now, one of the things that's very helpful to know about these particular types of bugs is that when they're disturbed, they have a tendency to drop straight down. And you can use that to their disadvantage. You hold the bucket underneath them, and then you jiggle them, and they will drop into the bucket. And you can hear them go clunk, clunk. And I have an entire bucket here. I probably have more than 100 of the disgusting beasts. And it's, they smell really bad. They're like a stink bug in that way. See? Can you see them drop down straight? And when they drop down straight, they fall into this thing. Now, fortunately for me, there are not... They don't have sticky feet like, say, a spider does. And they don't climb all that well. They're capable of climbing on the plants, but they're not great at climbing up, say, the walls of this container. So I am able to walk around and stick my container underneath them and knock them in. And I've done that probably a dozen times now. Uh, when I started this process, this whole top of the bed was literally full of black things. When I miss some and they fall down and they either miss the container or manage to drop off before I get there, they will just simply come back up later. So <laughs> I ran across this problem last year. I found a weed right by the door to the yard, the gate, and I noticed some of these guys on there and I went, uh oh. So I started smushing them and I smushed every one that was on the plant. And then every time I would walk through that gate, I would stop long enough to smush anybody else that was on there. And within a couple of days, there were no more of these guys. And that is by far the simplest, least invasive way to control a bug. It's no different than picking um, tomato hornworms off. It's no different than picking off tomato hornworms or any other obnoxious thing that you might have doing damage in the garden. And it doesn't require any chemicals. Uh, you can catch them in the hand, they don't bite. They do smell bad. So when I get done, I will actually wash my hands with uh, some special soap we have for things that smell bad. <laughs> Um, now what I'm going to have to do, these can fly, but to be honest, they don't fly all that often. Usually their, their most effective means of self-protection is that they drop straight down. Well, that works really well for, um, birds and things like that. Although I think most birds tend to ignore them because they, they smell terrible. So I have to assume they don't taste great either, 
and I'm sure that's a, defect, a defensive mechanism. The only other critters I've seen in here besides these guys have been a couple of ladybugs, and they don't fall off easy like these guys do. And if they did, I would simply rescue them. But, yeah, so that's what I've been doing this afternoon. Um, I probably have, oh gosh, at least a hundred, maybe more, of these nasty little stinky creatures in here. And, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to use uh, a little bit of soapy water to finish their season for them. And I will watch this bed. Uh, I will be out here. This is my second trip out here today. And I will come out until I don't find any more, basically. I suspect that, um, I don't know why they're on these plants. I don't know why they were on the weed last year. Uh, they have never been on here before. I would have noticed them. Um, because I do pay attention to things like that. But I'll be, I'll be sure to get some up close pictures of these guys. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the easiest way to control bugs. Sometimes, I've seen times in the past when I had a huge concentration of squash bugs on a single leaf on a squash plant. And by carefully removing that leaf and destroying it, I was able to annihilate the squash bug population. So a lot of times, before you go to chemicals, if you could do something like this, infinitely preferable. When I was a little kid, one of my nastier jobs was when we would have Japanese beetle infestations, I had a regular sized can, not a, not a big one like this, probably just a little like a soup can or something and it had kerosene in it and I had a stick and I would knock the Japanese beetles in when we had infestations because my parents didn't know what to do about it. And to be honest, it's not a bad solution. I've actually done that for other people who had infestations of potato bugs and things like that. Especially the larger, heavier beetles like that are pretty easy to knock into something. It takes a lot of perseverance. You've got to be willing to go. It's the kind of thing you put some tunes on and you go out there and you just do this multiple times until you really don't see anymore and then you come back once or twice a day until they're all gone. And that's physically removing the predator from your, the pest, from your, uh, your vegetable. It's a great solution and uh, I prefer not to have to do it because it's kind of yucky. I mean, these things stink. <laughs> but hey, you know, I didn't have to spray anything. It didn't cost me anything. And I uh, accept some time. Great excuse to get outside on a lovely afternoon, get some fresh air, except it's not fresh if you get downwind from this. And uh, it's interesting because I would say 99% of the shield bugs here are sort of a blackish brown, but every once in a while, one out of a thousand maybe, is green. And I know that's a, I think it's a separate variety, you know, like I've seen them separately in the books. Doesn't matter, you're a shield bug, you don't belong on my plants. So you're toast. <laughs> so I hope you find this useful. I'm back down at the solar trailer. There's a few things you need to be aware of when you start working with a new system that you're not familiar with. One is how big the solar panels are, the second is how much battery capacity there is, and then, in the case of this solar trailer, the most important part is knowing how the DC charge controller and the inverter chargers are configured. Right now, the generator is running to run the deep well pump. I'm going to check the battery voltage on this trailer. And I'll double check against the inverter just to see whether or not they're tracking each other. The trailer has 10 solar panels each of which will put out about 250 watts. And that's the original specification and now you can probably count on about 225 watts a piece. These are some pretty big lead acid batteries. There's over a thousand amp hours of battery capacity in these two stacks. Sometimes if you can find a concentration like I have found this year 
I was able to keep my squash bugs under control on the squash plants by smushing nymphs. Nymphs are the soft bodied uh, stage of the squash bug. Once they have acquired their hard shell, they're very hard to get to. They, um, they're very resistant to various insecticides, but the nymphs are soft bodied and I would find a little collection of them or I'd find the eggs and I would just smash them. And that just solved the whole problem to start with. So find out what your pests are and find out if there's a stage in which you might be able to catch them before you need to go to insecticide. It's definitely my preferred technique. Hope you find this useful. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because we're obviously gonna be doing lots more. I forecast I'll be out here for a couple of days, at least once a day checking this out because I can see there's a few more down low and it's easier if they're up high when you go to shake them out. That way they don't get tangled in the stuff. But I'll take some stills of this stuff. This is pretty gross. <laughs> and the smell, oh, you're lucky you don't have smell of vision There we go. There's some of my collection. Yum, yum, yum. I was gonna wait till Henry got home from running an errand, but I was concerned that the sun would go down too much and it'd be out here with a flashlight. So yeah, I probably got at least 100 in there, maybe more. And I'm going to throw soap and water in there. And that'll be the end of them. So until next time, bye.